So the PR2 has a, a lot of different features on it uh, uh, that allow it to do various tasks in the world. So uh, first off, it has a mobile base, so it can move forward, <laughs> it can move back, it can rotate in place. You can do the Macarena, it, is what you're telling we, me. We can attempt to do the Macarena, <laughs> yes. Uh, one thing that's really neat is that it can actually strafe, so it can actually slide side to side. And it can combine all of these motions to give really nice, smooth, and natural uh, motions when working around people. Uh, it also has these really nifty arms here, so um, We'll let it, uh, we try not to let it touch anyone, but sometimes sure. it, it gets a little carried away. So it has these nifty little arms. It can use these to uh, uh, manipulate objects in the environment, pick things up, put them somewhere. Um, it could also use this in a social context for gesturing. Giving us a little attitude. Yeah, yeah, a little attitude. Well, PR2 thinks he's a, a tough guy. <laughs> That's amazing. So, so the PR2 has a mo moving head, so it can... Give the That's little head like nod. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so what? In what situation would it move something? Um, so, if you could give us a few examples of. Sure. So, so uh, a lot of the tasks that people have requested that robots use if they're going to be in the home are typically physical manipulation tasks. So, okay. going and fetching some sort of object, moving it from one location to another, or bringing it to someone for whatever they want to use it for. So, sure. uh, say that we're working with uh, uh, s an older adult, maybe mm -hmm. someone who has some uh, some sort of physical impairment that limits mm -hmm. their uh, mobility when it comes to getting things from a shelf sure. or moving heavy objects from point A to point B possibly even getting their medicine or anything they yeah. would need like that. And so if you could send a robot to go get some of those things, basically serve as an in-home assistant, um, you could really, really alleviate some of the burden from the person so that they can yeah. go about their day and do the things that they're comfortable doing and Be confident in doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the robot primarily works on battery power. I okay. have it plugged in because okay. we might be filming for some amount of time. Sure, so, sure, of uh, course. The robot's battery lasts for about two hours. Okay. Um, and usually uh, it's running completely untethered. There's nothing plugged into it. It can drive all okay. around the room. Uh, we've driven it down the halls uh, in different <laughs> spaces. Uh, it, it's, it, it's really a mobile platform, and everything is sort of self-contained. So the batteries, the brains, the body are all sort of self-contained here. Some of the other things about this robot, we, we, we've talked about how it moves, so it can move its body, uh, it can move uh, its arms, and it can move its head, um, but then we need to talk about some of the sensors. Okay. And so uh, we have down here at the bottom of the robot uh, this ground-based laser, so it scans in a plane, and so I can see things like your legs or like the wall or obstacles in the way, um, and it uses those to avoid obstacles so it doesn't run into things. So we have a laser up here, it's just like the laser at the bottom, uh, but this laser can tilt up and down that allows it to uh, scan in a a bunch of 3D planes, sort of like this. And what that's doing is it's giving us a nice 3D map of the environment. So right now it's still, but we can move it nice and slowly like this. We can speed it up a little bit. It could take a faster scan. So it's not getting as, as in-depth resolution as it's uh -huh. moving, but it's moving much faster. So this might be useful around a person.